Hey everybody, it's Gumplamelli. Welcome back to my channel. I hope everyone's been doing fantastic. Today I have an awesome review that I have been had that I've had planned for quite a while. So I'm pretty excited that I got all of these nippers in the mail and now I can review all this stuff for you guys. Before I get started to today's video, I want to give a huge thank you to the sponsor of my channel, newtypehq.com. I want to have the link down in the description below and once you click that link, you'll automatically get 10% off your total order. Now let's get into the goods of the video. So today I'm going to be reviewing three God Hand products and the Bandai entry level nipper and the Tamiya side cutter. So let me show you guys the close-up of these amazing products. Show you guys the packaging for these God Hand nippers. So first up here are the kid nippers. Really cute drawing and I like that it comes with a little case. The back has some information but all in Japanese. Not surprising, I mean these are made in Japan so. Next one up, I'm really excited to try these because I have actually never tried these red ones. I've seen them before, but I always go with the, you know, the regular blue ones that they're famous for. So I'm pretty excited to see how these cut compared to the blue ones. And lastly, from God Hands, their famous blue nipper. The one that I always use on a majority of all my builds, minus the really thick ones like the, you know, the latest ones that you guys have seen me build, the, the Giant 112 and the 124th. I did not use these because I was scared that it would break the tip. So I use these Tamiya's right here. Now, unfortunately, I cannot show you the packaging. I'll probably insert a picture so you guys can see what the packaging looks like for these. Now, um, oh, these are a little rusted as you can see right there. I honestly don't know why I don't keep them near water, but yeah, they got rusted. So I believe these are the Tamiya side cutters is what they're called. So these are my second to goes when I don't feel comfortable using my God hands. And lastly, I just picked these up the other day so you can, so you can, so I could compare the cut between these cheapo, like $8, you know, entry nippers compared to the higher end nippers here that I have. Now, all the God Hand tools do, do come with a little pouch to put them in. The Tamiya and the Bandai nippers do not come something to, you know, protect the tip. So that's something to keep in mind. And I really like this pouch. I usually keep all of them in here. And not only do I keep it in here, I also have, but as you can see here, this is where I keep my God Hand tool along with these um, God Hand, what are these called? Uh, pliers, not pliers. Um, shoot, I forgot what these are called. Tweezers, God Hand tweezers. So I keep them in here because they were these were obviously expensive tools I, I bought and I don't want them damaged. So I keep them in here. So now let's take a look at comparing these cuts. So first off here, I just have a spare runner from a kit. So now that all the parts have been cut out, let me switch to my macro lens and then I can zoom in and show you guys just how well these cut. All right, so first off here is the Bandai entry grade nippers, as you can see. There it does leave somewhat of a stress mark here. And on the other part, let me see if I can get this camera to focus. Give me a second. Okay, there we go. So as you can see, it does leave stress marks on it. But I mean, not bad for $8. I'm pretty surprised at how well it was able to cut this piece out. As you can see, I was not able to get all the way in there just because the blades are so chunky. Um, so you can see here, you're not able to really get into small areas very well because the, the blades again are really chunky and not long. So it's kind of hard to maneuver, but overall, I mean, for $8.99, it's not bad. Now moving on to the Tamiya side cutter here. I mean, when you compare between the Tamiya and the Bandai entry level, it kind of looks pretty much the same, right? I would thought there would be a huge difference, but in reality, it there's not much now the Tamiya is easier to maneuver around tight corners and it looks like maybe the stress on the plastic is not as large compared when you compare the two cuts so the Tamiya does have a cleaner cut let me look at the other side and you are able to get very close to the plastic itself or is there another cut on here you know but paying I believe you can get the Tamiya side cutter for around $30, maybe $25 to $30 compared to $8.99. Honestly, it's hard to really justify you know, the Tamiya price when, you know, you, the $8.99 is doing a very surprisingly decent job. All right, so here we have the kid and leaves a really clean cut. 
As you can see, the stress is not very big on the plastic itself. And here's on the front. So very, very minimal compared to the Bandai and the Tamiya. Let me just do a quick comparison. So here is the Tamiya one, and that is the kids. Let me do the side one, which is a little bit of a bigger cut. So you can see the God Hand Kids is a little bit less of a stress mark on the plastic. This kid one cuts really well. Obviously, you know, the, you know, $8 one has the biggest stress so far, but uh, yeah, I'm pleasantly surprised at how, I mean, it's God Hands. I don't expect it to be bad quality, but um, yeah, it's the kids cuts really clean. Now moving on to the next God Hand Nipper. This is the PN120 even less of a stress mark you can't even really tell that I cut it out of there you can see it on this one just a little bit versus the kind of uh not knuckle but in between the I guess the finger so this one is a little bit more noticeable now let me compare that to the Bandai entry grade like is that not less than half of basically of a stress mark you would get with this one so i guess you know you could use your bandai with you know maybe cheap old kits like uh, high grades or sds but really i wouldn't want that giant stress mark especially on a glossy surface on a larger kit because it's going to be much more noticeable so that's something to keep in mind but this one did a very good cut let me compare this one to the tamiya now this one is smaller than the tamiya and as well, it cuts into the plastic much nicer as well. Now, lastly, comparing this one to the kids, even that it's still gonna be a smaller stress mark. Let me look at the fingers. Since this is, oh, it's so hard to get a hold of this. I cut my thumb really bad and I'm trying to hide my thumb um, from the camera. So you guys don't have to see my disgusting cut or uh, slash, however you wanna call it. And it's a little hard to not use my thumb to hold these pieces. But here it is comparing the kits to the uh, PN120. Now, lastly, for this, their highest line here, these are the famous SPN120s. If I can get this to focus. Now, can you guys off the bat even see the, where, you know, I cut out of the plastic? I mean, you can't really tell. That's how clean of a cut. And this is a glossy surface as well. So for me, I feel like you can tell more imperfections on a glossy level. But you can see... The cut was right as you can see the stress mark is so freaking tiny on this part let's look at the other side this one's a little bit more uh, you can see the raised indentation but again super super minimal that's why i just love these now there are some things you need to be aware of where aware of which i will discuss in a little bit but honestly, just in terms of actually cutting through the plastic, which was like butter, cutting through butter, it's so smooth. And then you can just look, I mean, you can just see for yourself. The cut is such a great cut. So there's the Bandai one and look at the cut between, I don't know if this camera is a focus. It's hard to get two objects in here. Oh, th there we go. Perfect. So you can see the size of this one is much, much smaller than the Bandai. Let's take a look at the Tamiya. There is the Tamiya cut, and now look compared to the God Hand one. Again, so much smaller. This one compared to the kids, still smaller. Here's a cut compared to the PN120. Again, this is definitely the closest cut versus the uh, their highest grade nipper. So both are still small, but the blue one here on the white piece is definitely smaller than the cut here with the red one. All right, so I actually used the God Hand SPN 120 on a black piece because I just wanted to make sure, you know, I don't know if colors play a part on how well you can see the stress on the plastic, but I just wanted to get it on a darker piece so you can compare or see for yourselves, you know. Um, but there is the cut right there on the black part. This is a black gloss. So still super minimal stressing on the plastic itself. Let me see where else I cut on here. I think right there was another cut that I did. And on this side, I don't even know. I, like, it's hard for me to even tell where I cut. 
because that's how small of a mark these nippers will leave. Actually, before I filmed this video, I actually posted a question, a poll question on my Instagram just to kind of gauge, you know, because to me, I, you know, to me, the, like the best nippers you can get are the Godhand SPN 120s. So I kind of just wanted to see what other people's thoughts are. So I did ask a question. I said, do you think the Godhand nippers are the best that you can get? 78% of you guys that responded said yes, 22% said no, and that was out of 853 were yes, 247 were no. So that was a pretty good turnout. Um, I thank everyone who uh, participated in that poll just because I kind of wanted to gauge what other people thought as well. So I guess a lot of people coincide with my opinion that yeah, these are the best nippers you can get. However, there are some drawbacks. Because of the fact, again, like I mentioned earlier in the video, the blades are so tiny. Not tiny, but very thin. I'm gonna do a comparison right here. The thickness of every single blade. As you guys can see that the SPN 120 from the God Hands are super, super thin, which will give you the cleanest cut. But again, that does come with some drawbacks, as in I have broken maybe like four of these on accident, on purpose, obviously. So there is somewhat of a technique you must use in order to not break or disalign the blades. Like the current ones I use, the blades are slightly disaligned. I don't know how that one happened because I made sure I didn't drop these. So the first time I broke the first set of nippers that I had was that I accidentally dropped them. So I'm working here about maybe like table distance and it slipped out of my hand onto the floor the blade was chipped so a good like top portion of the blade just flew off and then the second one I I don't know what I was thinking I had used I was using the nippers to try to pry a piece of I know I'm gonna get like but I'm just gonna be honest with you guys this is you know learning process here so years ago I had stuck then I wanted to separate parts um, that uh, I don't remember what what I what, what I did, but I wanted to get the parts separated. So my genius self was like, "Oh, let me use these really expensive nippers to kind of jam because they're so thin." I was like, "Be perfect. I can just easily squeeze squeeze that in the uh, you know in the seams and pry the parts or pry the parts apart." And yeah, that's not what happened. I stuck the nipper in there easily, and then when I went to kind of wiggle it, snap, blade snapped. So. You gotta be really careful with how you use these things. You only want to use it as an, it is intended to be used. Nothing extra. Learn from my very expensive mistake. Don't drop them. I know that's hard. I, I have butterfingers, so when I use them, I make sure that I'm working over a table and there's no gap. I'm not like leaning back where I could actually drop them. I make sure to work over the desk, so there's no, uh, you know, there's no way that they'll slip out of my hand and fall onto the floor. Another thing that I use to make sure that the nippers will will last longer is I what I tend to use I use two nippers so I will tend to use the Tamiya to first cut out the part and then I'll use the God hand to do the second cut um, and you know cut the excess that's remaining so that's sometimes what I tend to do uh, it just depends on how I'm feeling because it's an, another step so it just really you know sometimes I do it sometimes I don't majority of the times I would say it's 50 50 sometimes I do it sometimes I don't in a nutshell I highly recommend these nippers. If you use them correctly and make sure you don't break them, I think they're extremely, you know, yes, they are expensive. I will admit that. They are an, an investment into the hobby. But, you know, if you treat them right, then they will last you a long time. It will save time from having to sand down and everything like that because it cuts so clean. You know, all you really, all you really need to do is just use the God hands and you don't even really have to sand down you know, the parts to get rid of that like excess stress mark and numb, mar numb marks and things like that. The God Hands will take care of that. So it is a time saver in that aspect. Bottom line is, do you need the God Hands to build Gundams? You don't, you don't need them. You know, that's just me being, you don't need to have the most expensive nippers to, you know, be a better builder or be able just to build a general. You know, clearly the, the Bandai entry level, which, which were just $9, did the job just fine. However, like I said, I prefer using the God Hands just because of, you know, there's a lot of the pros outweigh the cons for me. So it saves me time. The clean, the cut is amazing. It's just overall, I like the hot, the God Hands, which is why I will continue to buy them, even though I've broken several. I will continue to buy them over and over again. Um, 
Now I know there's other nippers out there. Unfortunately, I haven't gotten my hands on them, so I can only compare it God hands to what I currently have. But overall, I, I would have to say nine out of 10 for me. I just wish they were a little bit more durable, but then if they were more durable, then maybe it wouldn't cut as good. So you kind of have to, you know, look at that aspect. But uh, yeah, let me just stop talking and end the video here so it's not too long. I hope I didn't bore you guys. And thank you so much for watching and I'll see you around for the next video. Adios.